Well, a very good morning to you. Welcome to uh, this morning's uh, Care Facebook live stream devotional message. Uh, we've been doing these now for six, seven weeks, possibly longer than that. And it was uh, begun really out of a desire to share from God's word at the beginning of the day, uh, to reach out to people who might be uh, living by themselves, for example, or might be finding lockdown life particularly difficult. That was the heart of these devotions. It was an opportunity to uh, try to create a sense of community and also to allow people to share with each other how they're finding lockdown life, what they're going through and what they're experiencing. And so Monday to Friday, we've been doing these live stream devotional messages. And I want to thank you again, as I always do, all of you who take the time to join me morning by morning. Um, I want to say a happy Friday to all of you as well with the weekend uh, just about upon us, though conscious that some have to uh, work over the weekend. But wherever you are watching from, whatever your situation is, your circumstances, you are very, very welcome on this CARE Facebook live stream. It's great to be with you as it is every morning. And I am, and I'll say it again, I'll never stop saying it, so, so grateful for every single one of you for taking the time to uh, to join with us and to watch these messages. Uh, do let me know, as always, where you're watching from. It's always brilliant to be able to go through them later and see we've had people joining from every part of the United Kingdom, from uh, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and parts of England as well. It's just brilliant. I love it. And it's wonderful to see the way that you're able to share with each other and pray for each other as well. That was another reason for doing these live stream messages was to uh, create those opportunities for people to share with each other. So wherever you're watching from this morning, you are very, very welcome on another CARE Facebook live stream. And it's great to be with you. Uh, it's an interesting time that we're living in. We know that it will be possible for private prayer to begin in church buildings, I think, from Monday. The government have issued some guidance this morning ahead of that. So maybe you'll be able to do that. I'm not sure. Maybe you're not in a position to do that or your church doesn't own their own building or is just decided not to make that uh, available, whatever it might be. But if you are, I hope that that will be some consolation for you amidst one of the hardest elements of the lockdown, which is just not being able to gather together as local churches and worship together. It's one of the most frustrating things. But I think that one of the great uh, calls in the Christian life is that we're called to trust God and we're called to trust God even in the dark. And that means when we don't understand and when we are perplexed and when we are afraid and when we are worried, that we choose to trust God and we choose to trust him because of what we know to be true about him. So we know from his word that God is true, that God is uh, faithful, that God is a God of love, that God is wise in everything that he does, that he is the sovereign ruler of the entire universe, that there is nothing that happens on earth that he does not know about. Uh, one of the old theological words that gets used is he's omnipresent, that is, he is everywhere. So there's no part of planet Earth, no part of the universe indeed, where God in some sense is not present. But we also know that he's a God who uh, cares for us. He has a father's heart for us. We are his children and whoever we are, whatever our gifts, whatever our backgrounds, whatever uh, circumstances we find ourselves in, we know from his word that there's no favoritism in God's kingdom. There's no favoritism in God's family, that he loves each and every one of his children with that deep, everlasting love. In fact, it's the same love he has for you that he has for his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the eternal son of God, fully God, who became fully human while remaining fully God and entered into our world and into our experience and lived that perfect life in order to meet the demands of the law of God, the law of God that needed to be obeyed in its entirety. I'm so sorry, I just had a, a brief uh, wireless break there. I, I think I'm now back. Okay, I think I'm now, I think I am now back with you. Um, I hope I'm now back with you. Um, welcome again to all of you, wherever you're watching from. I'm sorry about some technical difficulties that I have been having, but wherever you're watching from, it's great to be with you. Um, I trust that you're able to see me. I'm certainly uh, able to see some comments still coming. So I think, I think I'm going to push ahead. Um, I do apologize for losing the connection there. Believe it or not, that's the first time that that has happened. Uh, since uh, since we began these live streams. So that really is quite incredible. But as I was saying, um, 
I have just lost my train of thought. As, as I was saying about the Lord Jesus Christ who came into this world, lived that perfect life and then uh, died um, on that cross for us. So he bore our sins in his body. And all of these truths, they're not just there to tell a, a great story. They're actually there to encourage our faith, to equip us to stand firm no matter what is going on around about us. And an Old Testament character that knew a lot about difficult times was King David, this great warrior king of the Old Testament. He was the man that God chose, the youngest of Jesse's sons. He was a shepherd boy who looked after the sheep and who defended them against many and various threats. And God chose him. And Samuel the prophet came and anointed him as the anointed king over the nation of Israel. And you remember that David began uh, his journey towards the kingship by serving in the court of Saul, who was the first king that Israel had. And you remember that Saul uh, became jealous of David and tried to kill him multiple times. And David spent many years of his young life on the run out in the wilderness in fear of his life while Saul and the Israelite army pursued him and chased him. David had with him a band of brothers who were united around him, but they were outnumbered very often. And again and again, David found himself in extremely dangerous circumstances, hiding in caves for fear of his life, while King Saul with the army of the Israelites right behind him. And yet David was also a man of tremendous faith, and that comes across in many of the Psalms that we read in, in the Psalter. And one of those Psalms where David expresses his deep confidence and his deep trust in the Lord is Psalm 62. Psalm 62 was written when David was in serious trouble. We know that from verse 3. David asks this question, How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? David describes himself in verse 3 as a leaning wall, a wall about to crumble, a wall about to give up. He calls himself a tottering fence, that is, a fence that his moorings have become loose, the foundations of the fence have become uh, loosened, and it's in just a big gust of wind, and the whole thing will just collapse. So David feels very clearly that the enemies that are against him are so strong that his own faith is, is struggling so much that he's like a tottering fence. It will not take much, and he'll be flat on his back. He'll be down and out the race. And that is an experience that, uh, while our circumstances might be different to David's, that you might be going through even this morning. You might feel like your faith is, is hanging by the finest of threads. You might feel that one more setback, one more problem, one more difficulty will just knock you on your back, as it were, and completely disrupt your relationship with the Lord God. You may feel as if the pressures of life, whatever they may be right now, are so great that you just cannot really see a way through. You may be worrying about the future. You may be anxious about what's going on in our society. All of these things may be going round in your head and may be affecting your heart and may be leaving you feeling really, really down and really concerned. And you may identify with David when he says, I'm a leaning wall, I'm a tottering fence, I'm on the brink of collapsing. And these enemies are ruthless. Verse 4, surely they intend to topple me. From my lofty place they take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. There's a deceptiveness about these enemies. There's a double-mindedness about these enemies. There's a double-speak about them. They flatter with their mouths. They bless with their mouths, but they are fundamentally lies. They're following the pattern of the father of lies, Satan himself, who so often flatters, but in fact it's all coated in deception. So David finds himself in this extremely desperate situation. He feels weak and his enemies are prowling and they are ready to attack. And, you know, as Christians, we experience, we face enemies every day of our lives. It is one of the great truisms of the Christian faith that we are called to be uh, those who put on the full armour of God and take our stand against the devil and against his schemes. How do we trust God in the midst of circumstances that we would not choose? How do we trust God when life is not the way that we would like it or we would want it? When our situations are extraordinarily difficult, how do we respond? What do we do? Well, Psalm 62 is such a help. David begins by saying this, Truly my soul finds rest in God. He's rehearsing truth. 
to himself. And that word truly at the beginning of verse one is to really emphasize this point. It's like he's saying, get this. This above all else is absolutely true. This I can rely upon. This I can know. I can't trust the words of my enemies. They are deceitful and they are liars. But I can trust in this truth. God. I'm sorry, just lost lost it there a little bit again, but we're back. My soul finds rest in God. That's what he says, Psalm 62 and verse 1. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. So David rehearses truths that are as true for him as they are for you and for me. Firstly, his soul finds rest in God. That is the ultimate rest that we enjoy with the Lord God. We are restless until we come into a relationship with our maker. We are at war, as it were, at enmity. We're at war with ourselves and with others and with God himself until we put our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do so, we find that that burden of guilt, that burden of sin, that burden of frustration that dogged us before we came to the Lord Jesus in repentance and faith is done away with. And we find God the ultimate source of satisfaction for our souls. We are restless and uneasy without God. And then we come to him and we find that he is the God who gives us rest, who gives us peace, who everything seems right. Everything seems properly ordered when we come into a right relationship with God. And our salvation comes from him and from him alone. Salvation is found in no one else. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ, through God himself, that we are saved. And David uses these terms that he uses so often in the Psalms, that God is his rock and his salvation, the fortress, he'll never be shaken. David is expressing his confidence that God is a safe place for him, that God's promises are safe things for him to hold on to, that God is stable, God is unchanging. God's plans are not faulted. God's plans never go through a, a, a revision. There's no draft plan. There is just God's plan that is going to be carried out. And David also knows in this context that God is his fortress. That is the safest place for him to go to. That his soul is safe in the arms of the everlasting God because God is a, a safe place for us as his people. Better that we find our refuge in God than in anyone else or in anything else. It is God to whom we look. It is God to whom we trust. And then in verse 5, David now preaches these same truths back to himself. Verse 5, my, yes, my soul, he says. He's now speaking to himself. And that is just a practical point that I've made before, but it, it's such a helpful thing for us to do. When worries and anxieties and fears crowd into our minds, when our brains are worrying, one of the best things that we can do is to learn to preach to ourselves, to apply truths to our own heart. David says, yes, my soul, speaking to himself, find rest in God. So don't, don't look too much at the enemies. Don't look too much at your circumstances. Don't look too much at that which unsettles you and, and distresses you. But think about God. Fill your mind with thoughts of God. Let your heart meditate on the truth of who God is. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Who are we going to hope to in the midst of life's circumstances? We cannot hope ultimately in the government, in scientists, in experts. We cannot hope ultimately in other human beings because all of them, though they can do good, can also let us down. But if we can trust in a person who is absolutely 100% reliable, who is 100% on the money with every decision that they ever make, who never makes a mistake and who's too good to be unkind to us. If we can trust in that person, hope comes from trusting in him. And that person is God himself. As we trust in God, hope comes to us. Hope that he will not let us down. Hope, which is a confident expectation that God will deliver us in his own timing. Confidence that God knows what he is doing and our circumstances are no accident and they are being used by him to really shape us and mould us and, and transform us more and more into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Truly he is my rock, verse 6, and my salvation. He is my fortress, I shall not be shaken. David is repeating what he said in verses 1 and 2 and notice there again, verse 6, truly, this is true, this is something I can rely upon. You might not be able to rely upon your feelings always. They can be deceitful. 
but you can rely upon the truth of God. You can rely upon the reality that God and God alone is your rock, your salvation, and the one that you can trust in, the one that you can hope in. You don't need to be shaken when you are trusting in the Lord God. I promise you that. You do not need to be shaken when you are trusting in the Lord God. He is your rock. He is your salvation. And he's a rock that can never be moved. There's no... uh, uh, There's no circumstance that you and I can think of that will ever change the stability of God. He is, he's always been, God has always been in existence, even before the time began, even before the world and the universe was brought into being. God is, he is the eternal being and God is never, ever, ever blown off course by anything. And that means we can trust him. In fact, he's the only being that we can truly trust completely and utterly 100% because he'll never, ever, ever change. God does not change. He is our rock and our salvation. In other words, we look ultimately to him for the stability that we need. And not being shaken means not being affected, not being moved around by the thoughts and the feelings and the attacks of enemies or the feelings of others or the words of others. We read uh, articles that criticise Christianity and we're unaffected by them in terms of our faith is is secure because we're trusting in God. We're filling our minds with thoughts about God. This is one of the great applications that you'll find again and again in the Psalms is think about God. Think about who he is. Meditate on his character. Meditate on what he has done. That's one of the best things that you and I can do. He says, David says, my salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. And here's the great application of this psalm. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And you notice there the encouragement isn't simply to trust in God. But David says in verse 8, pour out your hearts to him. And it seems to me that the two go together. That it is as we pour our hearts out to him that we are putting our faith to work. That we are expressing our confidence in God by telling him what we're going through. So right now, this morning, Friday the 12th of June 2020, whatever fears and anxieties lie in your hearts, why don't you pour them out to God? Take them to God. Let him know every single one of them. Be as specific as you like. Name your anxieties to the Lord God. And the reason that we do that is because he's our refuge. That is We talk about safe space, as it were. That's a phenomenon in our society, isn't it? Safe space where you can, you know, not be triggered and things won't be said that will upset you. Well, God is the ultimate safe space, if I can put it like that. You could tell him anything and he will not deal with you wrongly. He'll not deal with you badly. He'll not get annoyed with you or irritated with you or frustrated with you. He is your loving heavenly father who is the safest place for you to go and just talk to him. He's your father in heaven. Think about when you were a child and it's possible that you uh, that you had a father in your home. It's possible, I know this, that maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't have a father at home. And so your experience of fatherhood is, is not a good one at all. Well, friends, whatever your experience has been, whether it is good or whether it is bad, God is a father that you can trust in because he is perfect, because his love is unfailing, because his love is so deep and so true. Because he has proved his love to you again and again and again. You can absolutely trust him. Pour out your heart to God. He is your refuge. And just as you'd go to uh, maybe uh, an older sibling or you'd go to a parent when you were younger, if you had something that you wanted to share with them, then likewise we can go to God. And even if you had a terrible experience when you were younger and, and bad parents who didn't listen and didn't care, try it with God. Because he's not like your parents. God is the ultimate father. He's the source of all good. He is good and all that he does is good. There's no one like our God. Pour out your hearts to him for God is our refuge. And when we're in times of trouble and difficulty, the temptation is to look elsewhere for our help. David picks this up in verses 9 and verse 10. He talks about not trusting in uh, extortion or putting vain hope in stolen goods or trusting in our riches. We don't want to trust in these things. We don't want to trust in wrong behaviours to get us through. We don't want to look to sin as the answer to our, our circumstances, however grievous they might be. We want to trust in God. And David finishes by giving us a number of truths that we can hold on to. 
Verse 11, one thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. I want you to remember this this morning. Power belongs to God. Ultimate power in this universe is not found in society. It's not found in governments. It's not found in heads of state. Ultimate power in this universe is found in God himself. There are many mighties in this world, but there is only one almighty, and it's our God. It's the God that we go to. It's our refuge in times of distress. It's the God who is with us and for us and not against us and apart from us. All power belongs to God, and with the Lord is unfailing love. He loves you. His love towards you is renewed every single day. It never runs out. It never runs cold. It never diminishes. It never changes. His love towards you is strong and constant every single moment of your life. Whatever your circumstances, God is love and God loves. And again and again and again, we need to be reminded of this thing. God's love is an un failing love. It doesn't grow colder and warmer. It is just true. It is just there. It is a love that you can absolutely rely upon. So when you choose to give something up or to take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, when you choose to do something for God, he sees, he knows, you can trust him. He's got your back. And finally, verse 12, you reward everyone according to what they have done. And here the idea is that You don't need to worry about whether justice will be done. You don't need to worry ultimately about whether things will be put right. God will sort everything out. God will bring everyone to justice. God will deal with the enemies that we face, with Satan, with the devils, and with all those who stand against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will either save them or he will deal with them in judgment. And that is God's prerogative. He is the judge of all the earth and it's up to him what he does. He is Lord. He is true. He knows all things and we can absolutely trust him. So that's the final message of Psalm 62. It seems to me that God will put all things right so we can leave all of our fears and our concerns in his hands. And back to verse 8, we pour out our hearts to him and we choose to trust him at all times because he is our refuge. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we praise you that you are our refuge, you are our rock, you're our salvation, you're our fortress, you're the one that we can trust at all times in all situations. We praise you that all power belongs to you and we thank you for your unfailing love. Father God, you loved us before this world was even created. You have loved us every moment of our lives. And we praise you above all for the love that sent the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross for us. Father, we pray, whatever our circumstances, whatever our fears and anxieties, that you would help us supremely to trust in you. Help us to rest upon you and upon your promises. Help us to rest upon your word, your unchanging word. And Father God, we pray and we commit one another into your hands. And we ask, living God, that you would watch over us today draw close to us. Uh, We pray that we would know and experience the joy of your presence and that you would help us to trust you even in the dark. Father, we pray for our nation at this time. Have mercy upon us. We pray that you would watch over all those who are struggling, especially at the moment. And we pray that you would bring us through this coronavirus pandemic and you would restore your favour to our nation and there would be a great change in the way that we do things. Father, have mercy upon the people, we pray. Open blind eyes, change hearts. We pray for our government that you would give them wisdom and integrity and guide them in the decisions that they must make. Lord, we commit everything into your hands again and we ask you to be with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much again for being with me uh, this morning. As always, if you can share this video, please do so. Just uh, underneath this video, you'll see the share button. Do share it if you can. And do let other people know and do like and follow the Care Facebook page. It's the best way of staying up to date with everything we're doing. Friends, wherever you're from, wherever you've been watching from, thank you so, so much for joining with me this morning. God bless you. Trust you have a great weekend. And I'll be back Monday morning, 8.45, Care Facebook Live. 
for more encouragements from God's word. God bless you.